Chicago has one of the highest rates of gun deaths of any major city in the country. And some on the front line say that's rooted in a history of racism, violence and inequality dating back generations. Judy Woodruff reports from Chicago as part of her ongoing series, America at a Crossroads. This is where Martin Luther King lived and worked while he stayed here in Chicago. 16-year-old Damarion Spann is giving a tour of North Lawndale, the West Chicago neighborhood where he grew up. While he stayed here in Chicago, Martin Luther King was struck by a rock from a white mob, and he stated that he never experienced so much hatred as he did here in Chicago. It's a different story from what's typically told of this area, where the life expectancy is roughly 12 years shorter than the wealthy downtown Loop neighborhood, where unemployment is nearly twice as high as the rest of the city, and the crime rate is nearly three times higher than the citywide average. Starting in pre-K, we've all heard the narrative of the violence that happens in North Lawndale, but once you get to explore and see the community more, you start to understand the rich history of the com community. Chicago was looked at as violent, and, and that's not fair to the students and to the adults who are actually working against that narrative and who's pushing for positive things. Do you feel, as someone who's grown up in this city, that your concerns are heard by the politicians? A national point of view, I, I don't think um, students from our community get her at all. What's going on in Chicago? Indeed, conservative media and former President Trump focus on the ongoing violence in Chicago, an example, they argue, of the failure of cities led by Democrats. And Chicago turned into a war zone. At least 53 people were shot, 11 of them killed. It is time to demonize them, and it is time to send them to jail. They only broadcast the bad. Like, North Lawndale is way more than what they portray on the news. Lady Sanders helps organize these youth-led tours of North Lawndale for a nonprofit called My Block, My Hood, My City. She says the tours introduce outsiders to this misunderstood neighborhood and give youth a productive outlet. They become more confident because it's, it's their neighborhood and people are coming to see them talk about uh, where they're from and what they see every day. With 77 so-called community areas in all, neighborhood identity is a fundamental aspect of life in Chicago, the country's most segregated big city. North Lawndale, like many South and West Side Chicago neighborhoods, is majority black. Much of this segregation can be traced to the great migration of a century ago. Black Americans from the Jim Crow South moved north, seeking greater opportunities, but what they found was not the segregation imposed by Jim Crow, but new and different barriers. Ida B. Wells, who is a noted activist, yeah. um, journalist, said Chicago was beginning to rival the Jim Crow South in its treatment of the Negro. Franklin Cozy Gay directs the University of Chicago Medicine's Violence Recovery Program, and he researches the economic, social, and historic causes of gun violence in the city. He points to over a century of racist violence against black Chicagoans and housing discrimination that has helped create the situation today. We're talking about a three to four billion dollar wealth gap between white Chicagoans and black Chicagoans that's directly tied to the inability to develop equity from housing. Cozy Gay recalls that in 1919, during the Red Summer, when black Americans across the country were terrorized, 23 black Chicagoans were killed and hundreds more were injured in this city. 15 white Chicagoans were also killed in the violence. And between 1917 and 1921, 58 black Chicagoans were firebombed in their homes. Not one person was arrested for those house bombings. What we begin to see is that physical violence was being used to constrain the movement of African Americans. In the coming decades, that physical violence would morph into discriminatory housing policies. Restrictive housing covenants kept black renters out, so-called redlining by financial institutions in concert with the federal government, limited black Chicagoans' ability to access loans for homes and businesses. 
and unable to get mortgages, they were forced into predatory contracts to buy houses at exorbitant prices with high interest rates and harsh eviction clauses that made it nearly impossible for many to build equity or actually own their home. Later, highways were built through black neighborhoods. And then came the construction and later the demolition of tens of thousands of units of public housing. Some of the fundamental things that help keep people safe are the ability to provide social support for each other, their ability to have beliefs on what they think their community should look like, mm -hmm. and their ability to use their collective power to enforce those beliefs. What you're doing is that you're disrupting the very things in terms of how people can support each other, which creates conditions for violence. Cozy Gay says instead of addressing these root causes of gun violence within communities like North Lawndale, the city of Chicago has tried to manage it mainly through more policing, and that hasn't worked. It is basically a process that keeps repeating itself. It has a new face. The United States government in itself is complicit, and we need to address that. Damarion Spann worries about police interactions in North Lawndale, where 70 percent of men aged 17 to 45 have criminal records. Have you had encounters yourself with the police? I had an encounter with an officer. It, it wasn't a good encounter, yelling in your face, pushing you around, threatening to arrest you if you don't listen to their orders. And the police sets to serve and protect, but um, I really don't agree with that motto. You have history of politicians, you know, for years who have downplayed or ignored these impoverished areas. Pastor Phil Jackson runs the Firehouse Community Art Center in North Lawndale, an organization trying to reduce gun violence in the community and help residents process trauma. A lot of companies and factories have left, so it takes a, a politician to take a chance, which might seem like a black hole to others, um, to invest in a neighborhood. It seems like pulling teeth sometimes with uh, different powers that be, uh, you know, to make that happen. There are a lot of people who try to make things happen at work, but there's a lot of systems in place that seem to, to pull back. I mean, there are folks who look at um, what's going on in, in inner city Chicago yeah. and say they almost throw their hands up. They've yeah. kind of written off this yeah. part of the country. Yeah. Folks who've been in this neighborhood 50, 60 years, they, um, stayed and weathered the storm and weathered situations, weathered hurt in their own lives. So even though things look so repetitive and so notorious and so heartbreaking, there are people on the ground that are making a difference. I don't want to be killed, but all my heroes doing the work that I do have been killed. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Robert Kennedy. In 2015, Jamal Cole founded the nonprofit My Block, My Hood, My City to try to deal with the epidemic of gun violence between young people here. He says he loves connecting with the community, including on his occasional runs. A lot of our students, um, they've been to 15 funerals by the time they're in ninth grade. Cole, 41, was out running two years ago when he heard gunshots. I thought a tire popped because you don't feel getting shot. I was like bleeding really bad. You think you're gonna die, you know, and you ain't gonna see your kids no more, your wife, your family. Yeah, it's traumatizing. Cole's organization takes a holistic approach to dealing with gun violence, trying to build community through block cleanup events, expose young people to opportunities through field trips to parts of the city they've never seen, give scholarships to local students, and pay tour guides like Damarian Span. The purpose really is like to just leave with love and, you know, um, and build relationships with the youth and keep them alive. How can we wrap around you and make sure we get you to college? If it is health care, okay, how can we help you with that? Is it mental health? There's no, barely any counselors in schools. What do you say to those folks who look at what's going on in, in inner city Chicago and say, yeah, it's really bad, they need to stop using so many guns. You know, a lot of this is their own responsibility, their own fault. I would challenge them to put themselves in a position of hearing gunshots every day, um, the position of having parents abuse drugs, the position of being afraid. So I'm getting emotional thinking about it. It's not fair. It's not fair that people say that because it's like they don't know what it's like. 
to be in these kids' shoes. The young people, I mean, do they have oh, a sense no. that yeah, the country the, cares about them? No, the judge doesn't care about them. That's what they tell me all the time. The judge doesn't want to hear my story. You know, um, I, how am I going to listen to a teacher when I don't have health insurance and I'm sleeping on a train? Like, Cole says this neighborhood needs help. More government funding, economic investment, and social services. But after generations of neglect, disinvestment, and discrimination, he acknowledges change also has to come from within the community. Uh, there needs to be a thousand things done to reduce gun violence in Chicago, and a third of that might be legislative. I think the best thing for people to do is to ask themselves, what's something simple I can do that'll make a difference on my block? Demarion Spann is trying to do that, but says he also wants to do more to try to change the whole system. What I want to do is go to college and receive my degree in political science, eventually come back and run for all the person for the North Lawndale community. Um, start on more of a local level, all the person mayor. Then I want to go to like a federal level, um, presidential. You might want to run for president one day? Yes. That takes a lot of self-confidence. A black boy coming from the North Lawndale community is expected to do the very least. So I want to do the very most and prove everyone that doubted those black boys to, that's coming from the community and show them that it is possible. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Judy Woodruff in Chicago, Illinois.